It's good to see you in the Lord's house today. Thank you so much for coming out and being a part of our service. We are certainly glad to have you in our church with us today, wanting to serve the Lord. Isn't that what we're here for? Serving Him, worshiping Him. Let's just have a good time doing that this morning. Thank you again for being here. Visitors, thank you for coming out and being a part of that our service. I would say something about these two young ladies here. Uh, they called themselves the B team earlier, but I can't do that. This is my daughter and our pastor's wife. It's kind of hard to call them the B team, but they're helping me out this morning. They're, they're going to be what makes me sound better, okay? Stand up with me. Let's sing a few songs together. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fit on I with the peace be still in all of life's ebb and Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife, this could fill my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. may be seated. Thank you for that good singing on that very first one. Don't give up yet. We got three more. We're just going to have a good time. I heard an old, old story, Victory in Jesus. Sing that with me, please. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came. Sing it out.
streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing out there the song Just a couple more songs I'd like for you to help us out with this morning, and they're both have to do with our need uh, for Jesus in our lives, our need for our Savior, our need for His help each and every day in our lives. So just sing them with us, Con contemplate, consider the words as we go through this, how much we need our Savior in our lives. I need the every hour, most great. Next song, same thought process, a few different words, but how much we need our Savior and our Lord.
teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. And when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. My one defense in this world, my righteousness only comes from him. I need you, Lord, in my life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity we have to come together this morning. Thank you for the worship that we've had today, just uh, admonishing you, glorifying you in your name and what you have done in our in our lives. We thank you for Steve as he brings this message. We ask that you would just hide him behind the cross and use him in a way, again, that honors you and glorifies you. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Well, today we're going to be talking about the mind of Christ again, and we're going to be talking about, in particular, peace. Now, this is probably the subject, uh, peace of mind, or having the peace of God in our minds uh, that I'm probably the least qualified to talk about, because I have rarely had a lot of peace of mind growing up. In fact, when I was a young man, I had I would break out in hives all the way up at, all up and down my back and they took me all kinds of specialists trying to figure out what was going on and finally someone said anxiety, what are you worried about? I'm not worried about anything. But it was just like this base level of storm raging between my ears all these years and I, I promise you this, with God's help, it gets better and over time it gets better. But one thing I long for, one thing I long for is that perfect joy, that perfect peace that will come when God finishes what he starts in all of us. So you may say, well, you shouldn't even be up there speaking today. Well, I tell you what, what is far more important for someone standing up here is not the qualifications. It's the calling. So that is why I can stand up here at all is because of the calling of the Lord Jesus. He has placed on my life to speak the word of God. Now, Jesus Christ was the perfect example of peace. So much so, do you remember back to the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2? What did the angels proclaim to the shepherds in the wilderness? Fear not. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, fear not. Which is very, we'll get to that, but that's very important to having peace of mind also as a lack of fear. Glory to God in the highest. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now, who is that peace? That peace is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ brings peace, but he is also peace. And no one exemplified that better, having the peace of mind or the peace of God as they lived out their life through so many different scenarios of storms and sufferings and people trying to manipulate him. Just on and on, the peace of mind that he was exemplified in his ministry was incredible. So much so, here the angels declare at his birth, peace declares him to be peace. You know, in Isaiah chapter 9, another, we could just do a Christmas message today. Isaiah chapter 9, about, also about the birth of Jesus. He shall be called Prince of Peace. See, God, is, God came so that we could have peace. We could be reconciled to him and have peace with God, but also we can have peace. And Jesus exemplified this. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. You know what? No one can have the mind of Christ here in this fallen world, and absolutely not, because we are being renewed day by day. We are being renewed to have the mind of Christ, and he will finish what he starts in us. But I want to show you a scripture that is just typical of Jesus Christ in his ministry and his time on earth. Luke chapter 8. And I could have picked, there's dozens and dozens of places I could have picked, and I just picked this one because, I don't know, it just spoke to me this week, thinking of basically like the winds and the storm that rages sometimes between my ears. Do you ever have that? Okay, those of you who don't, you already have the mind of Christ, you can go. Starting in verse 22 of chapter 8. Now on one of those days, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat and he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. Now do you think Jesus knew a storm was coming? Of course he did. What was the purpose of this trip? Was the purpose of this trip to get to the other side? Or was it the journey? And guys, our lives is very much the same way. We focus on where we're trying to get to, but we forget sometimes that it's the pathway getting there that is the most important. And Jesus here is exemplifying that again. So they launched out. Now, just a little bit here so you know. Now, with most of the disciples, they did what for a living? Most of them were fishermen, so they lived on this lake, did they not? The Sea of Galilee? So they were very familiar with what they were doing out there on this sea. This was where they knew what they were doing. They didn't need God's help doing this. We got this thing, right? Let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. But as they were sailing along, he fell asleep, and a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake, and they began to be swamped. Now, it said he fell asleep. It didn't say he stayed asleep. Now, maybe he did. Maybe he did, but I'm thinking he's laying there snickering kind of watching him through squinted eyes. I don't know. Or maybe he doesn't even need to do that. He knows what's going on. It's it's got to be just hilarious to him. Now, it wasn't hilarious to them, right? They're scared. They're terrified. Look what happens. So they launched out, but as they were sailing along, he fell asleep, and a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake, and they began to be swamped and to be in danger. They came to Jesus and woke him up, saying, Now, do you think they came to him as a last resort or a first? You know, when a storm comes along, you know, the wind starts to blow a little bit. The waves start picking up just a little bit. Oh, we don't need to wake him up. We got this. Let him rest. He's tired. We got this. Then the waves get a little bigger. Until what? Till till they're just fighting for their lives. Right? There's nothing left. There is absolutely nothing left for them to do. Now, how many of us in our own lives live our prayer lives just like that? We live our lives day to day. We got this thing. We got it. We don't need your help until everything is falling apart and all is lost. And then we call on the name of the Lord. Well, guys, I will tell you ahead of time, to have calm seas between your ears, that is a backwards way of living. You will never have the peace of God in your mind if that is the way you live your spiritual life. So they waited and they waited until it looked like All was lost. They came to Jesus and woke him up, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he got up, and he rebuked the wind and the surging waves, and they stopped, and it became calm. Now look at what it says in verse 25. Where is your faith? That applies to us any time, any time, any storm, whenever fear grips us, anger grips us, whatever the case is, whether there's a storm raging in your head and there's no calm seas between your ears, where is your faith? It always comes back down to the same thing, does it not? Where is your faith? I mean, what were they thinking at this point? Could we rebuke the wind? Could we rebuke the wind and make the seas calm? We did everything we possibly could. No, see, the the difference is, where is your faith? Don't you know that God is going to take care of them? Don't you know that Jesus Christ, asleep in the front of the boat, is the Lord God Almighty? Where is your faith? If God calls you to go down with the ship, why are you so afraid? 
Why are you fighting against the will of God? I'm not saying don't row. I'm not saying don't pedal. I'm saying, why are we so afraid? Why do we give the devil a foothold? Where is your faith? They were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? You know, maybe they, to their defense, maybe they weren't sure who he was yet. Maybe they thought, some thought he was a prophet. You know, Peter hadn't declared that yet, that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, I want to just say this about, because having peace of mind is not like a form of stoicism where they want to deny any emotions whatsoever. See, lack of any emotions isn't necessarily a sign of maturity at all. It's a sign of weakness. It's covering up a weakness. Jesus Christ did not exemplify this stoicism or lack of emotions or this trait in stoicism that some people follow. Consider in the garden. What did Jesus do with his emotions in the garden? Probably the most waves you will ever see between the ears of Jesus Christ was in the garden. Nevertheless, Father, but not my will, but your will. What did he do? He calmed the way. He didn't get rid of the circumstances, but he calmed the waves between his ears by what? Submitting to the will of the Father. Okay. If this is what I have to do, if I have to go be beaten, mocked, spit on, and crucified, then I will do it. If you want to see peace and quiet strength like we talked about before in the middle of a raging storm and torment, go look at Jesus during the trials. Just incredible. I want that peace. I want to live with that kind of peace no matter what is going on. We often think of peace, that we can have peace when our circumstances are correct. Well, God is commanding us to have the peace of God no matter what the circumstances are around us. Remember the disciples in the boat. Where is your faith? See, anybody can be calm and euphoric, basically, when everything is fantastic. But God calls us to be calm euphoric, trusting in him, living by faith, even when circumstances are terrible. You remember Paul and Silas when they were imprisoned? And then the scripture says something, I'm not turning there, but the scripture said something very strange and unique. It said sometime after midnight, Paul and Silas were singing praises unto the Lord. Do you think that had an impact on the prison? At first, maybe some people thought they were drunk. But that's peace. That's the peace of God. See, God not only just promises, and we won't have just the mind of Christ to look at and see the exemplification of a peaceful mind in any and all circumstances. He also makes the promise for us, which we'll get to. Now, Christ also exemplified great emotion when he cleared the temple. I don't think a wave was stirred between his ears at all when he did that. He was following the will of God to perfection. What about his passion for the lost? His passion for Jerusalem? His love for people? So no, it's not a lack of emotion that causes peace. A lack of being able to feel. Or a lack of caring. It is none of those things. It is God that gives peace. Peace of mind. Peace between your ears. That can only come from God. Now, if you're an unbeliever in here, you may go through periods in your life where you have peace and you go through periods where circumstances are such a way that you can have a peace. You'll never have peace with God or be reconciled to God because that only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. But when the, the storms of life come about and the waves start breaking and it all seems to fall apart. Now, for us Christians, we have to start living forward and not backwards. If we want to have the mind of Christ and the peace of God, we have to start living on purpose spiritually first, like Christ did. Like he told the apostles, where is your faith? Turn to John chapter 14. Maybe you think 
That's not a promise. Now, I'll tell you, Romans chapter 1 and 2 makes it very clear. We are to be renewing our minds. Now, what are we to be renewing our minds to? To fit into the world? No, to the very mind of Christ. So as we go through this life, Christ and the Holy Spirit are trying to shape us into Christ, to become little Christ. And the more we do that, the more effective we are at reaching people in ministry and living out this life with hope and not fear. John chapter 14 Jesus is talking to the disciples, if there's anything, very little faith and very little hope in the room at which he is speaking. He has just told them that he is going to die. Look at what he says in verse 25. This is Luke 4, John 14, 25. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. So now what does worldly peace look like? Circumstances. What does the peace of God look like? It can certainly be peace in a time of a storm, or certainly something like that, or great circumstances, but it also is peace, greater exemplified being the peace of God in a time of great suffering, in a time of great terrible circumstances, whatever the case. Now, I will say this is, maybe it's the weather change, but I was in a lot of pain this week, and it is harder to have a peaceful mind When you're going through a time of suffering, and I'm not comparing my suffering in any which way or the magnitude to that of Christ, but I'm just saying, I don't think that was a coincidence. I think God allowed that for me this week. So look at this, the helper. First of all, I want to point out, we have a helper. Christ, the Prince of Peace, the peace on earth among men. He came so that we could have peace and reconciliation to God. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, that's you. You have been reconciled to God by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now, if that is not you, you don't even have the foundation to try to have a peaceful mind at all because you haven't even been reconciled to the chief cornerstone. You haven't been reconciled to Jesus Christ. If you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, first and foremost, to live in this maddening, crazy sin-loving world, you have got to give your life to Jesus Christ. That's first and foremost, to have a peaceful mind. Christ is the Prince of Peace. So give your life to Jesus. Trust in Him for your salvation. And then, and then, we grow in Christ. We learn from the Word of God. We live a life of spiritual things first and putting things in the proper order And we also can calm the storms that is raging between our ears. You ever heard before the battle, the spiritual warfare, the battle occurs between your ears? Would you say that's true? Oh, I think it is. Where do we make a pronouncement of faith? It is our will to surrender to God. Where do we decide to follow Christ and to carry out the will of God for our lives? It's between our ears. That's where the war is raging in the spiritual kingdom is between our ears. Now, are we going to be able to better serve the Lord, make decisions with clarity and forthrightness, knowing the direction that God wants us to go, if the wind is raging at 90 miles an hour or it is calm seas? There's a reason Satan doesn't want us to have peace of mind. And there is a reason that God wants us to have peace of mind so first of all in 26 it says we have a helper man i'm very glad to have a helper without a helper i would be in bad shape without the holy spirit i don't think i would even have the resemblance of a person who could stand up here without the holy spirit correcting me guiding me leading me so know that you have a helper but look at 27 peace i leave with you my peace i give to you Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. 
Now, there's a command for the apostles, but also a command for us. Do not let your heart be troubled or fearful. So in other words, we have some type of control. We have a helper, but we're not helpless to this. We can, we can exemplify the mind of Christ in this way, having peace, living in peace, with a clarity of thought, serving the Lord out in these crazy, crazy times that we live in. No matter what the circumstances look like, it's not peace as the world gives peace, Jesus said. I want to show you a verse, and this is often pointed out, but it is, and I've taught on this verse a lot, but it is absolute perfect for what we're looking at today. And I want to skip ahead to Philippians 4, 7. I'm going to start with the last verse that I'm going to get to and show you, first of all, look at this. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. The peace of God. The peace of God. This, is talking, this isn't just to the apostles anymore. It wasn't just to the apostles. This wasn't just Christ that had the ability, the perfect mind, to exemplify a peaceful mind in any and all circumstances. It wasn't just that. It's also a promise to us. Look at this. The peace of God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, why does it surpass all comprehension? Have you ever wondered that? Because it's not worldly peace. See, worldly peace, as the world gives peace, is based upon circumstances. But peace of mind and the peace of God is not based upon circumstances. That's why it's beyond all comprehension. Because when circumstances go sideways, and guys, if you didn't know this, they will. This isn't a health and wealth gospel church where I'm going to tell you everything is going to be fantastic. Troubles. We are due troubles. Troubles are coming. We're in the middle of troubles. The question is, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to be like the rest of the world? Not beyond comprehension and just respond like everybody else? Allow the waves to break inside of our head and just respond in a very expected way as the world would expect us to? Or on the other hand, are we going to have the peace of God, the clarity of thought, the calmness of thought to respond in a godly way? And if we do that, look at what it's, look at, consider this verse again. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now going back, let's go back to verse 4, because it says something very import, important. Don't you want to know, looking backwards now, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, and the peace of God. So now, how did that come about? That's basically what that's saying. Well, how do we get that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding? Well, Paul has just talked about that, so that's why we're going backwards now. So we can see what he's talking about. What do we have to do to have that peace of God? Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Now remember, thinking of those disciples on the boat, were they rejoicing in the Lord? I don't think so. You know, how many times for ourselves, we find ourselves where circumstances are not great and we find ourselves not rejoicing in the Lord? You see, it always, it doesn't just say when things are good, rejoice in the Lord always. Remember what I was talking about, putting Christ first, putting spiritual things first, keeping our eyes on things above? Guys, the minute, the minute in this life you allow circumstances to remove your rejoicing in the Lord or living in the joy of the Lord, guess what happens? The wind starts to blow. That's what happens. The waves start to build. The breakers start breaking on the beach between your ears until finally you're helpless. Remember Paul and Silas in the prison? That didn't happen to them. I'm not saying Paul was perfect. He wasn't perfect. But in that moment, he was exemplifying peace that surpasses all understanding, all comprehension. Why? What do you think the prison guards thought? One of them came to Christ. These guys are either lunatics 
or they know something. How could they be so calm? How could they be praising the Lord in the midst of these terrible circumstances? You see the difference in the disciples' behavior on that boat and Paul and Silas in the jail? Most of my life, I'm the disciple in the boat, living backwards. I don't call on the name of the Lord for help until I can't row any harder anymore. That's just human nature. Living in fear based upon circumstances. Being helpless. What is the worst thing that will happen? You go down with the ship? Well, the Bible says that's the best thing that will ever happen to you. You have nothing to fear. Don't you believe in the sovereignty of God? You are his children. You are the very bride of Christ. You will not pass away until God allows it to be. And if circumstances come up in your life... Are you going to exemplify peace that surpasses all understanding? That's the question. I want that kind of peace. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. They didn't, maybe didn't understand perfectly yet how near the Lord was in the bow of the boat when he was asleep up there or but God, doesn't the Bible promise us that he will never leave us or forsake us? Even when we rebel against him and we go play in the hog pen and eat the hog slop, he's not leaving you. He's there with you. When circumstances get bad, he is not leaving you. He is there with you. Knowing that, do you believe that? Do you have faith? That God is always there with you? Do you have faith knowing that you're going to, how, you, how this whole story ends up? Do you have faith knowing that your life can live a purpose outside of it's being a ball and a pinball machine bouncing all over the place? We have to trust in the Lord. And verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. Charles Spurgeon said this. He said that anything we worry about, anything that we are anxious about, we have made it to be an idol. And I never thought about that before. That means we've made it to be an idol. If we're worried or anxious about something, aren't we saying is, aren't we saying basically that the problem is too big for God to handle? Or perhaps we're saying, God, even though it may be your will, I don't want it. I don't want that. Be anxious for nothing. I want to point out the obvious here. It doesn't say be anxious for be anxious for a few things. Be anxious for nothing, it says. Nothing. So how could we possibly do that? It sounds impossible. Well, if you're living like the disciples on the boat, like I have lived the majority of my life, it is impossible. Because we're dealing with circumstances on our own. We're forgetting that this serves a purpose. We're forgetting that Christ sent them across onto the sea knowing the storm was coming. We're forgetting those things. We're forgetting the fact that what we, what we want above all things should be following the will of God and to glorify him in every situation, not the path of least resistance, not the path of greatest comfort or success. See, success in the eyes of the Lord is not the same as the world gives success. Peace, according to the world, is not the same a peace that God gives. I want the peace that lasts. I want the peace that can give me calmness between my ears no matter what is going on on the outside. In order to do that, we have to rejoice in the Lord. We have to keep our eyes on the Lord. We have to put him first and think of him first. We have to trust that he is there. We have to trust in the promises. And we have to be anxious for nothing. Because I'll tell you, anxiety and worry about things, 
and I'm preaching to the choir, you know, you know this. Well, not really preaching to the choir, I'm preaching to the sinners in this point. Those are really just idols. Now, I don't know what you're caught up with today or worried about. You just got to let it go. Trust in God. How silly would the worry and anxiety we have for this or that? Maybe some project, construction project, health problem, financial problem, family problem. How silly would that be if right now the rapture of the church happened? I mean, just think of it. No, Lord, leave me here. I've got things I need to do, I need to worry about. God, without me, this whole place is going to fall apart. My family will be in. Guys, every one of us is replaceable. God is sovereign. The question is, are we going to flip it around and stop living backwards? That's the key. Let's stop living backwards. Let's focus on what really matters. Let's calm the seas between our ears so we can exemplify the peace of God, so that we could carry out a ministry in our lives like Christ carried out his ministry in the midst of raging seas on the outside, in the midst of pain like nobody has ever experienced, but still have the calmness and clarity of thought and love. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's the peace that really matters. You're going through a time of circumstantial peace or Worldly peace in your own environment right now? Great. Fantastic. Won't last. It's just true. It won't last. You got great health right now? Great. It won't last. We're all dying. You got great finances? Well, there's a reason it says, in God, we trust on the American dollar, guys. Tomorrow, that can all be different. What are we putting our faith in? Circumstances? Now, in verse 7, last verse. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, how does the peace of God guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus? There's no other verse that says that God's going to guard your mind with the peace of God. Now, what happens is when we get a little bit of that peace, when the winds just let up a little bit between our ears, we don't want to give it up. We don't want to give up ground. So the same thing happens for you and me. If we start living on purpose, focused on Christ, Christ first, living in that manner, and God gives us a little bit of peace of mind. The winds just drop from 60 to 50. The waves go from 8 foot to 6 foot swells, whatever the case. You won't want to go back. That's just the truth. I remember one time a friend of my dad's encouraged him to go take his boat out and go deep sea fishing. It sounded like a great plan. But when we got out there, my dad's boat, I think, is about a 20-foot deep V, so it's, it's a bay boat, really. But the swells were eight feet. And the guy we were following out there had a smaller boat than us. We couldn't even see the other boat most of the time. Happened to be if we both crested at the same time, we could see the other boat. And the guy told us, when you get out there, just fish between the waves. Kind of troll in between the waves. Well, on the way out there, my dad, he gets really seasick. So he is now driving the boat, throwing up in an ice chest. And I'm probably six years old, and my little brother's five. And my dad looks back at us and says, you lay down on the floor and don't move. He didn't want to have to worry about us. And so after a little bit, my dad decided this wasn't fun at all. 
And when we happened to crest at the top, the same time the other boat, he motioned he was turning around, and they amazingly, they decided to do the same thing. But we made it back. But that was eight-foot swells, and that's scary. But guys, comparatively to that, the amount of turmoil and garbage we let into our minds and causing storms in between our ears, that's nothing compared to what we allow to happen. We have got to stop entertaining and allowing the world to manipulate us. We have got to stop allowing sin, doubt, fear, hopelessness to cause storms between our ears. The battleground occurs between your ears. And if we're going to glorify Christ in any and all circumstances, we have to calm the seas. We have to. And how do we do that? Rejoice in the Lord always. Put Christ first all the time. The minute you don't put Christ first, the wind starts to blow. The minute you start begrudgingly looking at some circumstance in your life, the wind starts to blow. You allow it to blow, it'll get stronger and stronger until you finally turn it back over to God. Are you going to wait to be like the disciples so the boat's being swamped and all is lost? Oh, God, please help me. That's a valid prayer. But what if instead we lived our lives based upon the peace of God, putting God first? We're not going to avoid the storms of life. We can just allow it to not be right there. Rejoice always. Walk with God. Remember, there is nothing that can happen to you that God does not allow. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you already know where you're going to end up. You can't lose. So why are we so afraid? Why are we so faithless and afraid? Trust God. He will never leave you or forsake you. Lay any worries or anxieties down. God is bigger. I can't. Every time I hear that phrase, I cannot think but the VeggieTales movie where that song, God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman. Yes, God is bigger than the boogeyman, and God is bigger than any and all circumstances. Let's stop living backwards, Christians. Why? I mean, you can continue to live that way if you choose to, but you're not going to serve the purpose that God intended you to serve. And that can have an impact on those around you. God first. Rejoice in the Lord always. Don't let your whole life be manipulated by outside circumstances. You live. Calmness, serenity, the peace of God in your ears, and then you allow the circumstances in your life to be used for God. And there's a huge difference. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much. God, just thank you for Jesus Christ. I think of his ministry over and over as he exemplified the peace of God so that he would even be prophesied the Prince of Peace and at his birth the angels proclaimed peace upon earth among men. God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. But God, it doesn't just end there. Thank you that you have promised us the ability to have peace of mind also, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. God, I pray that each and every one of us here, if indeed they are truly living their lives backwards like I have done for so many decades, that we would start living our lives Christ forward. And by doing that, we can calm the seas that are raging and the storm that's raging between our ears. God, I pray for peace of mind. I pray for each person in there to have peace of mind. I pray for each person in here to relish the peace that they have, not peace as the world gives, but peace as Christ gives it. God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ and his example. In his name we pray, amen. Please rise.